Hey guys, Rick here with New Hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and show you today how I make some cool runic bases for my Grey Knights. Just to be clear though, this isn't my technique. This was posted on YouTube in 2019 by a man named James Wapple. I'll have a link in the description below, so credit where credit is due. But I did modify it slightly with some color correction and um, some Valhalla and Blizzard to make it my own. Sit down, have a drink, let's do some bases. So the first thing you're going to want, you're going to want to gather all your equipment. Sculpey is the basis. Bases. Uh, it's like adult Play-Doh. You can buy it on Amazon. It comes in big kilo brick. Really just gray putty. Um, and then of course, once you've done that and you have it, you're going to want something to go ahead and press it down with. Don't recommend a rolling pin unless you buy one for hobbying in general. I just use a dowel I had in my garage. Um, then you're going to want to get yourself the rolling pin. Uh, this one, or the, the runic rolling pin. This one is uh, dark runes. These are from Green Stuff World. They make a bunch of these. So I picked the chaos one because I figured that my Grey Knights would probably be attacking the forces of chaos where they dwell and uh, all that jazz. So these are the chaos dark runes. And then you're going to want primer. I use this for all of my non-modeling priming. Uh, this stuff's cheap, easy to find, works great. Uh, you really only need one coat most of the time. You're going to need your bases, obviously, uh, your paints, your brushes, and some, some super glue and some paper towels. So let's jump right into it. Um, you're going to want to take your Sculpey, lay it out. I'm not going to show you here. I just did a huge batch of this, and honestly, like... My hands still hurt, but you're gonna want to lay it out, flatten it down to about three, four millimeters thick. Um, once it's nice and flat uh, from the pin, you're gonna take your runic pin and uh, you put a little water on it. Uh, actually, real quick, you can see here where uh, I didn't do that, and some of the sculpey is now permanently and forever part of this pin. So. Uh, go ahead and just put a little dusting of water on there as you go ahead and uh, roll the rune into the uh, Sculpey. It might stick a little bit. Just pull it back off. Go slow, firm pressure. You'll you'll get uh, a nice look. Then you're going to put all that stuff on a baking sheet, uh, a little bit of parchment paper or uh, wax paper. Bake that uh, in your oven at 180, 200 degrees for about 45 minutes. Yeah is this a whole bunch of these as many as you made obviously but so this stuff over here isn't really usable it's where I uh, I didn't press very hard with the pin or whatever but um, all of this is so I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna turn this into a sweet looking base go ahead and grab your base find an area of the pattern you like Slap it under there. I like to leave a little edge so that that's where I'll uh, put that snow texture paint. Just go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'll just go over here. So, like, I'll just show you. It's really, it's it's kind of bendable. It's not super brittle, but it is easy to break if you want to. So, um, I'm gonna use most of this chaos star here. I'm gonna grab this. I'm just gonna bonk a whole bunch broke off that's okay you can see I have a whole bunch of more pieces here um, you want like I have other other bases here that are almost entirely made up of these smaller broken pieces so you can just reuse them on other bases it's not a big deal every super glue and a healthy amount it's really healthy that's a super healthy amount you don't need that much uh, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so. Let's see. I want it to look like that. That's it. You let that dry. Um, you can do this now, as, and I'm, I'm going to, but hold firmly around the rim of the base and just snap off anything that's kind of hanging over. Um, I like to leave a little bit hanging over. I think it adds a neat little effect. Um, 
but you can see here I've got this rim and go ahead and add snow to all of that. I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these hopefully because doing these uh, one-off sucks believe me. You're gonna go outside and prime them. You're gonna have something that looks like this. You're gonna take whichever one you want to work on and now's when you start painting. Um, because I use a semi-gloss primer and I don't want that gloss look, I go ahead and do a light dry brush first of uh, a bad and black. I've already done it on this one. Uh, but just, you know, do a dry, uh, a dry brush, it pulls that gloss look right off. And then you can get into the nitty gritty. I want to make it very clear before I start with the painting. Every brush here is mega cheap. Mega cheap. Um, I think you can get these packs of these blue ones off of Amazon for... It's a huge pack. Of various types. Uh, I think these two came out of here too. I think this was like five bucks for all these. They are synthetic, not sable hair or anything super nice, uh, but they will work beautifully for all of this kind of, uh, of work. This is also a very cheap makeup brush that I got on Amazon as well in a big pack. Um, it, uh, it comes with some smaller than this, some uh, larger than this, and a sponge. The big ones are great for doing terrain very quickly, by the way. That is another video. So, you've got all your paint brushes, you got your water, mine's off screen here. Uh, and we're going to start by taking whatever color you want as your primary color. So, I like this light blue, the techless blue. So that's what I'm going to use. And obviously you can use yellow, red, orange, green, purple, whatever. Um, my highlights will be done by Soulstone Blue. And then obviously the terrain will be done with um, Valhalla and Blizzard. Uh, sorry, got a little cat aggro there. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that you're going to need to uh, get a wet palette or some kind of palette because we're actually going to take your base um, color here and we're going to uh, we're gonna water it down a little bit. So the idea is we're gonna take our paint and we're going to shove paint into all of these rooms, right? We want it to sit in there uh, and then we're gonna wipe it off with the towel, the paper towel. So we're gonna, uh, we need it to be wet so that it'll go deeper into those runes and then uh, it'll also take longer to dry because have done this a bunch of times and if you don't put water in here, it, uh, and uh, water it down a bit. It's um, a real bitch. You want you want this to be pretty watery, like one to one. It's a little. All right. So remember, these are acrylics, and even loaded down with water, it's this uh, step's going to go pretty, pretty fast. So you got to be be ready to go with your paper towel and your paint. But you can see here, I'm just gonna, I'm going to shove paint onto this thing, like, disgusting amount. Then, we're gonna wipe it off, you can, you can kinda pat it off if you want to, but you see the effect that we're going for there? I mean, that looks pretty good by itself right there, with only one pass. But you wanna wipe it off on the top before it dries, so that you don't have to go back and Keep dry brushing over the top. You can see that I missed a little bit. Um, actually, on the camera, you might, you might not be able to, but there's a little bit that I missed kind of in the point of the star here. But you can go back. Didn't add more paint. You can go back and just do that again. Boop, 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 boop. And you know, if you want it to look faded, like the runes are starting to fade for power, um, the Grey Knight's purity or whatever. Um, you don't have to keep patting in there. And there you go. That that looks pretty good to me. Um, so I'm going to actually close up my base color here. And like I said, this is way better to do in huge batches. Way better to do in huge batches. Um, doing these one-off sucks. Don't do it one-off. So 
so now I'm gonna we're gonna give this a few minutes to dry and I'll be right back and we'll do uh, we'll do uh, the highlight color with some soulstone blue um, again if you're doing a batch you can just if you're doing like 30 of these the first one is dry by the time you're gonna do your uh, your highlight color but I'll be back in a minute or two this all dried up three hours later all right we're back uh, Sylvie is still here being adorable is pring up a storm go ahead and get your brush wet this one it has a bit of a point on it it's not it's not great uh, you wouldn't want this thing to do any kind of detail work but for this it's perfect and shake up your soul stone and get a pretty good dab there I'm gonna put some that's what I'm gonna eat Cat hair, man. Cat hair and wife hair. Gets everywhere. Alright. So, I'm gonna look at this. And I'm gonna decide where... Oops, sorry about that. Uh, I'm gonna decide where some of the more interesting details are. So, maybe the point of the star here uh, and this circle. I want it to stand out with a bit of a highlight. So, I'm gonna... I, again, I'm going to load up my brush i gonna really jam this blue into there. I'm gonna do just par small parts at a time. Because Soulstone Blue is a wetter paint than uh, a uh, Techless Blue. You can kind of just do this without watering it down, but. Jam. Jam paint. Some of you might be asking why I don't have autofocus on or uh, something. Um, I have been very displeased lately with the autofocus on the, the Logi Tech Brios. Um, they're driving me bonkers, so hopefully the 1080p is enough for you to look at look at this and get all of the details you need, but there you go. So uh, if you wanted to get into this even more, you could. Uh, Sylvie, no. Sylvie, no. Um, you could go a little further even. And you could um, use white. White or any lighter blue, and you could and that, that way you could have some uh, some highlights that are both uh, lighter and darker than your main color. And then, all I'm really gonna do now is I'm going to take my Valhalla and Blizzard and because I'm a sucker, I bought the uh, expensive Citadel Pop uh, sickle stick. I'm just flower this on here. Um, I don't. I don't put it all over the base. Like I know the way snow falls. It, it, it falls everywhere, obviously. It doesn't stay up in these clumps, but my my uh, my my mind, my head cannon for the there's a battle going on and strong psychic energies emanating from these runes. So you know maybe the snow melts, it doesn't get a chance to really stick to sides. Obviously, making realistic diorama but not thing my own ideas here I also have found as I'm using this more um, this texture paint in particular you don't use a lot of it it dries and contracts and then it kind of looks more like styrofoam bubbles left on the the uh base and the and then it looked like no I don't want to load this up goofy say that but paint anyway barely got a lip over here being put any Captive audience. 
stuck in there. Anyway, there you go. And then, when it all dries, you know, I think this this stuff, uh, I usually leave it overnight. That's enough. Um, you can go ahead and then um, take your model, glue it on. I've got one here ready to go. This is a, a Paladin. Side cannon. Hope gets buffed soon, but we'll see. Uh, and then the finishing touch, I'm going to add some tufts. Got these from uh, minigrounds.com, as you can tell. Uh, I bought two. I bought uh, these dark blue. I thought I was like getting, getting um, a little ridiculous, and I'm like, okay, well, if they're on the runes, then they should probably have absorbed some of that power, and they'll turn dark blue. Or uh, if they're on the snow, then they'll have a light of tusting of snow. So um, I tried it here with the off the kick, kick carry, and you can see down here that is actually a, one of these blue tufts. And the the sad fact is that there's so much blue here now, you can't, you can't even see this thing. So, but the white, the light white one, really stands out. So I'm gonna continue to use those. For this project at least. I'll find something to do with the blue ones. Um, yeah, grab your trusty... Um, I'm gonna put the... Uh, I was just uh, thinking... Oh, here, look, you can kind of see what I was saying here, where if you don't add enough, it kind of just looks like bubbles, not uh, snow, so I'm actually gonna add more to this. Here. I'm done shooting this video, but go ahead and grab... Uh, whatever tuft you want, Tw your trusty tweezers, maybe they're not so trusty, using them, there we go, oh I got two, boy howdy, alright, well, one, no, the other one, put it, Kind of near that one. Cool. Like in this bush. And that's it. It's all done. Um. <sighs> From here, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to, you know, let everything dry again, and then um, take it outside. Go ahead and seal it with whatever sealant you like, and you're done. I hope this was an enjoyable video, uh, a little different first hobby video, so if I had any um, glaring technical issues, I uh, apologize, but uh, I'm going to bring you more hobby videos in the future, specifically terrain. I do a lot of 3D printing for all of my terrain, so I can't wait to show that set, uh, set up off. Um, yeah, pretty easy. Um, you can have a movie on and just get into a, a rhythm and just start cranking these out. Like, like no one's business so uh thanks for watching like comment subscribe share all that jazz and then uh don't forget call your mother